continuing on with RSI, one thing that I wanted to point out was when you're in a significantly strong uptrend, and we talked about buying the first oversold condition, actually when it's a very steady, relaxed, very strong but obvious uptrend, not explosive, but just chugging, if you like, 45 degree angle type of thing, your RSI isn't going to come oversold. In fact, it's gonna find support in the sort of mid range. So in here between like 60 and 40 tends to be a kind of support area. For these chugging trends that are just new trends, chugging along, you know, it's never gonna drop. It Well, I'm not gonna say never because anything can happen in the market, guys, but you know, you get, you find that it gets support around that sort of midpoint, the 40 to 60 level. So that's just one thing to be aware of. You know, if you're looking to get involved uh, and if you want to get more involved a bit more frequently, obviously the better option is to wait for the, the less frequent occurrences but the more high probability, i.e. the first proper oversold condition. However, if you want to get involved in something for whatever reason, then, you know, you may want to start perhaps looking at that kind of midpoint scenario to get involved in. Right, let's move on to a crude oil because I know that crude oil has been in a range. So perfect scenario for you know the RSI, probably a great little oscillator tool to guide you. And one thing actually to point out is, this indicators can be used to get yourself into trades, but another thing that people overlook, and this is what I love indicators for, is to keep you out of bad trades. You're not gonna obviously keep you out of every bad trade, but if you've got, a, let's say you've got a golden rule that says, you know what, I never buy when the RSI is overbought. So I'm never involved. Yes, you're gonna miss some things, but I, my guess is if you do that, you're gonna keep from getting caught out on things. You're not gonna be chasing things. If you're waiting for RSI to unwind or for some oscillators to unwind before getting involved, you're probably gonna save yourself a lot of money in the long run. I know that from a day trading perspective, if I'm using filters to stop me getting involved, um, Average true range is one that I use. Don't want to buy if we're over the average true range for the day, that kind of thing. That keeps me out of a lot of trouble. At the end of the day, remember guys, is it's about keeping the money you make. And also making more money is often about making less losing trades. At the end of the year, year you're gonna have a much better year. So digressed a little bit. Let's move on because you know what, I rem there's something that I remember from crude oil while we're here, we may as well look at it. And this is a great point, and there it is uh, from RSI. I don't know if you can spot this, but let's go for it. Now, one thing that a lot of people like to look at is what's called divergence. So what is divergence? Divergence basically means that price and uh, the momentum indicator, in this, in this case RSI, are not matching up. So in other words, price is pushing to lows, but the RSI momentum indicator isn't indicating a new level of momentum, potentially, insinuating, I didn't want to use the word indicate again, that the whole thing is going to move around and push back in the other direction. This was a great one on crude oil because I remember it clearly. Coming down from this 110 level back you know, in 2014, if you were trading crude oil then, remember it was good times, a uh, very nice time to be trading it. Accelerated down, you would push the lows. This is where you get the divergence. You get a new low in crude oil. Now, let's just look at a few of the, the, the kind of structure of it first. What you don't want to be getting involved in is new lows that happen very, very quickly. You know, you've got five or six day period of the new low here, a week period here. You know, don't want to be involved and trying to guess overbought or over, uh, sorry, divergent conditions then because it's just not going to give you the value you want. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. What you're looking for is continued moves to the downside, a rotation back up that happens over a longer period of time. If you're day trading, that's going to be kind of an hour or two as opposed to your five minute push to the downside. If you're trading on a swing trading perspective, that's gonna be you know a lot longer time frame. It's gonna be two or three weeks, four weeks, that kind of thing. Exactly what we got here. So really strong aggressive downtrend, pushing to lows, momentum indicating that weakness in crude oil. Then we get that counter trend move. Not very strong, granted, very, very weak considering how, 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 how deep this whole thing went. Counter trend cycle up pushes back, makes a new low, this is where you get that divergence. Let me clear the pen out of the way so we don't get uh, confused. Um, so look, we get the new low here. People are all hopping on it to the new low, but look, the momentum indicator, the RSI, is not. Is only just about tagged oversold condition. It's definitely not gone to a new low. So this kind of divergence where you get price at a new low, indicator, momentum indicator, not indicating a new fresh momentum, 
is a clue that potentially a counter trend play is underway. So if you're short, you definitely want to have an alarm bell ringing. Hey, listen, I've had my run out of this. I might start to consider scaling some out if my thesis was for that kind of move. If you're looking for a counter trend trade, you may want to look at that and say, hey, I might start wanting to look involved. In, I might start want to look to get involved in it now. Where's my low? Where's my key level? How can I quantify my risk? Okay, maybe I can take a little go as we break back above this prior low here. I can quantify my risk under the low here. Low risk reward trade. That's giving me five to one, three to one, whatever you, how you want to structure it. Probability is there as well, because it's not all about risk reward ratio. Don't forget, it's about the probability of the trade working in your favor. I've got their lack of momentum here. We have come a long way without a pullback. All the kind of things you stack them together, stacking these these indicators and, and confluence kind of signals, not really confluence, but it, you know, you're stacking these positive signals if you like, and then saying, yeah, great, I'm gonna take the trade. So that's one way of doing it, looking for the divergence when you get to new highs or new lows. Um, again, not something you wanna just systematically use and say, hey, well, I've got a divergence here, I'm gonna just go all in my full net worth uh, into the trade, but it's something that helps you, guide you and say, you know, let's say for example, let's put a scenario in front of you. You were looking to buy crude oil, and you're saying, you know what, crude oil is coming down, but I, I still think crude oil is going to go higher, but I want to find a good place to buy. So you forget about price for a moment. You think, you know what, I'm not looking at price. I'm not interested. I just want to see a sign that momentum has ended. It could be at 70, 60, 50, 40. I don't know. I don't care. Or I just want to look instead of I, I might have missed a short trade or um, I might just be bullish on crude oil in general and being wrong at this moment, but I'm waiting for a, a price action signal that indicates I may be right, that kind of thing, just aligning yourself with one direction or the other. Price comes down, and then you say to yourself, okay, now I want to look. So I just want to wait until I see that uh, you know higher low in RSI coupled with a lower low in price, and then, then... I'm going to focus. I'm going to watch it every day. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to get more of a short-term entry with a swing trader's position. And you can see how this is so much advantageous to you because, you know, we're digressing slightly here away from the, the pure topic of RSI, but it all fits in with a broad spectrum of, of how you integrate with trading, which is what we're all about. We're about, you know, making as much money as we can for the least risk as, as we can as traders. So, you know, keeping out of the bad trades is, is a key point. Now, you're wrong. If you're bullish running down here, you've got to face the fact that you're wrong. Yeah, if the market is moving lower. However, rather than just saying, you know, I'm wrong, I'm getting perhaps frustrated or looking too early for the turn and disbelieving the fact oil is going down, you're reading all the fundamental things that are saying should be going up, accept it and say, okay, that's fine. I will get long when I see X and Y. And in this case, you can say when I see those criteria there. That saves you from getting involved too early. It saves you from watching it all the time. It saves you from chasing short because you have a plan of action to get long. So you see these kind of things really help you as a trader. It means you can move on, look at something else, earmark crude oil for that potential setup, and then come back to it later on. So we've moved away from the definition of RSI a little bit. However, this is, this is kind of where it becomes more powerful and where you can integrate into your trading.